now. Hey, this is Del Jackson. I got Coach Joe Clazes with us. Um, Joe's been reluctant to get on with us, but I finally hooked him on. I, I think the summer's over. So how you doing, Coach? Doing well, Dell. Thanks for having us, and thanks for LL Hoops and all, all these guys do. It's, it's great to follow these guys and get league information all the time, so I appreciate that. So where, where are you at with the summer program? Are you about done, or how's that wrapping up? We, we are done. Um, we played over at Spooky Nook and um, – with uh, over at Hempfield, uh, that stuff got finished uh, early July. Um, we did, uh, we started this last year. Obviously we couldn't get in gyms and we wanted some activity, but um, this past week over at Amos Herb Park in Landisville, we got together with some of our alumni, um, you know, and just played some pickup ball, which is, it, it was great. You got a chance to see some kids I haven't seen in a while, some former players get caught up on some of the things that they do and, you know, it's good for those kids, too, to, you know, share their experiences with our current teams and, you know, give them some advice on, on how to get through certain situations. So uh, they had a lot of fun. Um, we ran till almost had to put the headlights on in cars to, to finish things up. But it was it was it was fun. But that pretty much wrapped it up for us this summer. Right. Well, you and I talked off screen about cost. So that's something you can do. It doesn't cost you anything. It's good. Absolutely. For and and I'm sure uh, if the game's got tight there was a lot of competitiveness there yes there was yes there was and it's you know it's funny seeing some of the alumni too because I think they uh you know they don't they don't play much anymore but you know it, they see it as an opportunity and and maybe they think back to maybe I wish I would have done something a little bit more then and you know they they definitely were the the more aggressive team uh, that was playing on Wednesday night let's talk uh let's talk a little bit about this year's team and and from a from a coaching point of view I want to hit on something before we go into X's and O's and and what what you had this year I want to talk about your uh your culture I know I know I talked to your AD Rich and and he said he said something that made a lot of sense to me he said that you guys are pretty good at developing the next leaders so talk to me about that a little bit um you know I, I think we feel it's really important to have good leaders uh in school uh, in the locker room, uh, and then of course on the floor. Um, so it, it's something we really try and encourage uh, with great communication and trying to get guys to step up and you know and and, and be um, a true leader um, and and help others around. You know, we always say you're only as good as what you have around you, um, and, and it certainly starts with good leadership. And you know, it's 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 been fun with you know some of the generations that we've had. We've had multiple. Um, you know, players from, from one family and, and see those guys develop through. And, you know, some of the younger ones like, you know, Devin Atkinson this year, you know, he was always around when his brother Dylan was in school. And, you know, I think he sort of learned um, that he was that type of player. Um, you know, in, in the years I coached Devin, as far as a, an on-court leader and a communicator um, was tremendous. Um, and we'll certainly miss that. And, you know, we're now trying to really, um, you know, ask kids to step up and who's going to be that next guy. So, you know, I, I think it's, it's good for us. We've had a lot of success with, with guys being um, on floor leaders, um, communicators. Uh, and, and I really think it's, it's, it's helped our success. Do you, do you pinpoint some kids or the, it just kind of naturally develops within the program? Um, I, I think a lot of it is natural. You know, we, we do in, in our open gyms, um, we, we don't do as much coaching. Uh, we really, we instruct, we'll put drills out there and, and we want to really see how kids can adapt to it and, you know, see how they help each other out through drills. Um, you know, so doing that stuff, I think it really, um, it really shows us, you know, who we can expect and, and who we might be able to go to and ask for help. Um, you know, the one thing I, I, I didn't say, like, Myself and all of our other coaches, none of us are teachers. So, you know, we don't have a chance to, to be in school and to pull kids aside at certain times. Um, you know, so it, it's, it's really important for us to, to be able to go to um, certain kids and, and just ask um, what's been going on in school. Um, have you seen anything in school? Is there anything that we can do? Um, you know, so that's, um, you know, finding those types of kids and seeing how kids can, um, adapt to things that we were trying to teach 
um, and seeing how they want to step up and help to show up their teammates is, is uh, you know, it, it's been a lot of fun doing it that way. Let's, um, let's talk about your team last year. I, I, I don't even know how to describe it. Um, you know, I'm thinking cardiac kids, but you know, there, there was something, there was something that was going on with that team, especially towards the end of the year that, that probably made the season special in more than one way. You want to talk a little bit about your, your district run and, and the States too. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, um, you know, I, I think even when we go back to the 2020 season, we, we had some, some incredible finishes down the stretch um, in some of those games. And, you know, we had, you know, Devin and Ross and Nevin that, that played a lot of big minutes um, in that 2020 season. So coming into this year, we, we felt we had some, some good leadership, but we were certainly going to need people to step up and, and fill roles. Um, you know, so I, I thought it was, it was good for us this year. Um, you know, and, and suggestion of, of my coaches too, which I sometimes get a little bit too much, into drill work and we don't do as much five on five stuff. Um, I, I, we changed things around a little bit, especially maybe halfway through the season where we, we just tried to do more five on five and do some more uh, situational stuff just to try to help um, get them comfortable in, in different situations. And, um, you know, so I, I definitely think that helped down the stretch for us. Um, you know, they weren't as maybe nervous in, in certain situations. They, remembered back to some things that we've worked on and um you know definitely coaching with a mask on this year there was a lot of, even though there wasn't many people in the stands um it was still at times difficult for these guys to to hear certain things and you know I felt really comfortable with the groups that we had on the floor that you know I didn't necessarily need to call something out for them to be able to uh, make a play that was um you know a, a effective for us so um, that was really, really big. Um, and, uh, I thought it was a super competitive season. Um, there was a lot of really good teams out there. Um, you know, some of the games that we had were certainly very memorable. Um, they were stressful. Um, I slept pretty well after some of them. Um, but um, just a great group of kids that, you know, they were pretty determined that they wanted to, to be successful and um, you know, the district championship again this year was was uh, an incredible accomplishment for them. Um, you know, the, the first round state game, getting a chance to play that at home was was certainly fun. And, you know, Nevin making that shot at the buzzer was was great. You know, it's unfortunate, you know. We lost that state game, um, you know, to mass civics and science, but I don't think a lot of people thought we were going to have a chance. And that was another way that 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 I think I I remember when we played some of those Philly powerhouse schools before where I sort of had that mindset where I was just happy to be there, which is really poor of me to do. Um, you know, I, I, I this past season, I just really went in with a, a with, hey, we're, we're going to win this game. And I think they, the guys had a lot of trust in that. And, you know, they made some big runs, but at no point did we back down and, and we answered things. And, you know, unfortunately that guy made that, that tough shot and, you know, who knows what would have happened in overtime, but hey, it was, uh, it was certainly a, a great season for us. I think things have changed a little bit in the, in the LL tournament and the district tournament, as far as getting um, home seed for, for a higher, a higher win percentage. How, how much yeah. did that help you this year? I mean, you, you had Columbia on your home floor twice. How, how, did that, did that help a lot or, you know, because we didn't have a lot of fans, it didn't really matter. It was just a basketball game. Yeah. I mean, I, I think it definitely helped. Um, you know, I think Columbia has always been our, our, one of our biggest rivals in, in all my years as a player and, and uh, as a coach as well, you know, going up there certainly would have been fun, but you know, um, yeah, I, I definitely think it, it's it's a plus to be able to, you know, play in, in, in your own gym, even though there wasn't many fans. But, um, you know, the guys practice there every day. They're comfortable on that floor, um, you know. So, you know, I, how they do it and as far as the fairness of it, you, you know, is, you know, the whole uh, power ranking and all that stuff, it's, it's still tough for me to understand. I give all that to, to Michael Rudy. He's our stats guy, and I let him – 
figure all the math out with it. But um, even now going to districts and, and being able to host some games in the early rounds, you know, I think it's a plus and I think it, it, it definitely is a motivational thing for us as coaches to say, hey, you know, if we can win these games, we have more chances to, to play at home. And, you know, I, I think that definitely helps uh, motivate the kids a little bit more, too. So um, we talked off camera that that you're going into either your 17th year or last year was your 17th year. I always ask uh, some of the coaches that have been around for a while, and, and you were an assistant for a long time as well. How, how has the game changed from when you first got into coaching and, and now? I, I, I think it's changed quite a bit. Um, you know, even for us, like last season, we did more – we've always been a motion team, but we did a lot of four out one in motion. You know, we didn't really have a, a dominant post player like we did. And, and so, you know, we did more five out stuff. I, I think as, as a coach, um, you know, I, I think you have to have some willingness to change um, and, and you, you see different things and, and you can teach different things. And, um, you know, I, I think that that's certainly important with kids, you know, kids, Today, there's there's a lot of drive and kick type of stuff and, and, and guys want to shoot, you know, so floor spacing is definitely different than what it used to be. You know, I remember in my playing days, you know, um, th there was a lot of stuff, you know, all five guys were doing inside the three point line and, you know, that's not existing anymore. Um, defensively, uh, you know, again, it's willingness to change as far as, you know, what you're going to be putting on the floor. Um, you know, we're going to be smaller and quicker this year. So we may have to do some more full court stuff. Um, you know, and, and I guess for, for me, uh, for us, um, I think sometimes the summer is where you try to figure some of that stuff out. Um, just seeing what you have out there and you play with different things. And, you know, the first few summer league games for us, we, we sort of let the kids just say, hey, just go do some motion stuff and see what we were getting out of that. Um, towards the end, we, we tried to throw a little bit more structure in, and, and I thought that helped us offensively. We, we finished the summer out better at the end than when we started. So, you know, just seeing how we can do different things and, you know, it gives us some better ideas that we can try and put together when we get started in November. Let me, let me ask you this as, as we're talking. I usually see your guys play. I think I saw you six or seven times last year, but I usually see you early and then – Obviously, I see in the districts, and uh, Andy usually checks you out in the states. But um, from the beginning of the season, let's say you know December to the end of the season, do you do you modify what you do? I mean, I always see your teams, and they always get better. And I'm just wondering if it's a repetition thing, or it's just like, okay, here's what I'm, I'm thinking about John Wooden stuff. You know, back in the days on um, practice number 30, he did the same thing with his first team as he did with his last. Yeah. I don't think you do that, but, but what, what, what type of adjustments do you make in season with your practices? Um, we do do a lot of repetition stuff in terms of some of our drills. I am pretty self-conscious about not repeating stuff um, from day to day. That, that drives me crazy a little bit. And that's something I got like a, Bob Slosher has been a great mentor and, you know, I coached all three of his sons. Um, you know, I, I will never forget. There was a, a one year gap between um, Ben was the oldest um, and Sam was, was the middle and then Will, but between um, when Sam graduated and, and Will came in as a freshman, there was a one year gap and, and coach came in and we got together and, um, you know, just talked about different things and, and, the one thing I really took from it was, and to this day, I still, every practice plan that I write every day, I have binders in our, in our coach's closet. And it's fun to go back over time. And, you know, we're struggling with this offensively and it sort of reminds you of a, a, a something from the past. And, you know, I'll go back through that practice plan and look what we tried to do to get through certain situations. So, you know, that stuff's been, been beneficial, but we, we do a lot of, repetitive defensive stuff just to try to really instill the concepts of you know making sure we we our big thing has always been control the middle of the floor you know we want to force guys outside sidelines baselines all that stuff um you know and then we want to make sure we're um we're we're getting reversals we're moving the ball offensively but 
you know, going back to, to, to some of that with the consistency and how we teach things defensively, like in our games with Columbia this year, you know, I, I if we can get the guys consistently to do the things that we need to do, like help side defense, we feel when we have a, a, a game plan situation where we want to put um, and we want to take touches away from a certain guy, we feel it's easier at that point to then go, okay, you're going to go and you're going to face guard him. You're not going to let him get touches, you know, in the Columbia game, the first year, uh, the first time we played him this year, and I'm, I'm terrible with names, but number 12, their shooter, you know, he made five or six threes and, you know, it was a big difference in the game. Um, so when we played them the second time, you know, as, as good as, as, as coach's son is and, and the other guard, you know, we felt we could we can really contain and slow those guys down. We knew we weren't going to stop them, but we felt it's going to be better for us to take 12 away totally and not let him get mm -hmm. those five threes. And mm -hmm. I think that was a big difference in the game. You know, we held him to two points, I think, and, and we did a good job of, of containing the other two in the middle and, and slowing them down. So, you know, little things like that, I, I think we can change throughout the course of the year, but we try to get as much consistency and we will teach drills or we'll teach certain things with different drills and make sure the kids have a good understanding of, of when we could see this um, and how we can um, correct things. All right. Another, another uh, X and O question I have of you, because again, I, I watch, I watch your guys. I've watched you for many, many years now, but it seems that you, you, Sometimes you come up with something in your back pocket that you haven't shown all year in a district game or a state game. Is, is that, is that type of stuff? Is that, is that practice or it just like, okay, this is part of the scouting and we're going to do a little bit different because we think we can do this with this team. Yeah. I, I mean, I, I think, um, you know, we don't run a whole lot of set things. Um, you know, we'll have maybe a half dozen each time, but when we're looking as far as how different teams may defend us, um, you know, pregame to that, we'll, we'll probably prep on, listen, we see this, we're going to run this, and, and this is how we, we, we can make adjustments. So we're trying to teach what the kids what we may see and, and how we want to attack it. Um, and that's been pretty beneficial. And, you know, we talked earlier with Huddle, and, you know, you talk about how things have changed in coaching, you know, from, you know, our my early days with, you know, having the, the, the film with the little – the little tiny films on little cameras and, you know, trying to watch film, setting it up. You want to watch one specific play in the second quarter and you're trying to fast forward a tape and kids are falling asleep because you can't, you know, it, it's, it's great now with the huddle assist and all that stuff. And you can hit on Devin's name and that's shoddy hit in the second quarter. And mm -hmm. it's, 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 it's it, that, that, that has been amazing. It, 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 uh, it takes up less time. Um, for us, you know, but um, it, it's a lot of good teaching points with that. But getting back to what you said, yeah, we, we try to, you know, look at how we may be defended or, you know, and, and then try to make some adjustments just so the kids have an understanding of, of what they can do and um, what type of opportunities they can create for themselves. Let, let's hit on the huddle thing. Um, we'll go back to the huddle. How, how does it work with the LL coaches? Does each LL coach exchange the huddles or some do, some don't? How, how does that work? Yeah, so um, Tommy Smith, they started when huddle first became popular, when we would have our annual coaches meeting, um, just threw it out there to say like, hey, uh, any coaches um, have willingness to, to, to do the assist and, and share film, you know, sign up. And a majority of the coaches are so. You know, a lot of times it's, you know, you reach out to an opponent you may see or somebody that they just played and, you know, um, you basically just exchange film. Um, I know there was times where people were hesitant to do that. And again, back in the day, you, you know, if you had four or five friends that were able to go out and scout all your games for you. But again, coaching these days, it's not a full time job. Uh, and obviously, like you just, I got to interrupt. My daughter came down the steps there. So I apologize about that, but it's like, you want to do everything you can to, to have as much home life. Um, and I enjoy sitting here and, and, and hanging out with these guys and doing things. So I don't want to have to be on the road to, to scout every game possible. So 
I have no problem sharing film. And, and again, somehow coaches are going to watch you play multiple times. So it's just a matter of you got to do a better job of preparing to give yourselves the best opportunity to win. Yeah. Not a lot of secrets out there. I know that. <laughs> no, 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 that's, that's, that stuff's pretty long gone. Um, you know, the biggest thing again, and it's, as a coach, it's, it's trying to, and, and it's good. We go back to what we talked about with leaders and, you know, sometimes when you watch film and you can do it, you know, individually, we, you know, we'll watch things as a group, but then there may be, I may go to a couple of our leaders, a couple of our captains to say, Hey, watch a couple of these things, you know, and again, you may not hear us from the sideline, but you may see this on the floor and, and this is what we need to do in these situations. So uh, again, that's, types of things that we look for um out of kids um someone that's willing to be able to take that 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 leadership role and, and be able to step up and you know make those decisions for us let's talk let's talk a little bit about the ll um we're, we're gonna switch again i don't think it's this year but the following year we're, we're doing the section switch like who's in your section coming up well so I was, I'm, I talked to Rich several weeks ago, but I, I had thought that the switch was this year. But so this um, upcoming year, it's the same as it was. That'll be the year end for that. So we got, um, of course, Elko, who I think is going to be really, really good this year. Uh, Octa Rare, Gene always does a really good job down there. Um, who else do we have? We have Donegal um, and Kevin's, he's making great improvements um, with that school. Um, and who else am I missing? Northern 11, uh, Northern 11. And, uh, you know, they'll be really strong again. They have great guard play up there. So, um, you know, then we do the crossover stuff, but then I, I would have to, uh, uh, I'm not even sure who's going to be in our, our section the following year, but I know it's, it's certainly going to be very competitive um, how they're going to do league playoffs and all that stuff will be definitely different. But before you talk about that, you got to be able to, to make the league playoffs. So uh, I'll worry about that down the road. You, you got to get in there. Um, uh, we're looking, the LL, LL Hoops is looking at the history of the LL League, and it's it's gone through a lot of morphs, man. It, it started with two sections and then three sections and then four sections and five sections and back to four sections. It, it's been a lot of, it's been a lot of maneuvering, and it, it, it's kind of interesting um, to see some of that. And then You've seen a lot in, in your times. So let's switch gears here a little bit, Coach Joe. Let's talk, um, let's talk about some of the teams that you've had in the past. Uh, you and I talked about off screen. And I know sometimes you have teams that don't win, you know, win the league or win the, right. uh, you know, and you're, they're still special teams to you. So, you know, you and I talked that we, you, you have personally coached four district title teams, which is, which is pretty incredible. And I didn't even count the number of times you qualified for the States. And that, that's pretty cool too. But let's talk about some of, some of your past teams, some of the players that stick out, um, some mm -hmm. of your thoughts. Yeah. Um, Put yeah, you, I'm putting you on the, I'm putting you on the, on the, on the, on yeah. the spot right here. And I know yeah. every time I ask this question to like Goodling or somebody else, it's like, uh, I, I don't know yeah. if I can pick out one. I said, I'm not asking you to pick out one, just a couple. Yeah, I mean, it, 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 it does. It, it, it gets tough. Um, it gets tough for memory. And, and if you coach with me um, or if you were here home, my, my memory is, is, is terrible. It's getting worse. I finally, a funny story, I finally had that first where uh, I was out somewhere and kid came running across the parking lot, coach, how you been? And I finally just had to say, like, oh. you got to help me out. And he spat out his name to me. And I'm like, I apologize for that. I do feel good. It was only a kid that only played for us two years. He didn't play his junior and senior year. But, but uh, yeah, sometimes remembering kids, uh, you know, in, in certain situations, it's tough. You know, I can go back through the years and moments I, I feel I can, you know, remember much better. And then it, it, it sort of brings things back, you know. Sure. Let's, my, let's, my, yeah. my first year, let's you know, 2006 moments. season. Go ahead. Yeah, that, that 2006 season, you know, with um, I had Nick Yulinko, who was an all-league player, and, and Sam Slosher and, and Kyle Purvis. Um, you know, the things that rang out to me that year were, you know, we, we played McCaskey tough in the league final. Um, but, you know, the season ended with 
we, we lost to Reading Central Catholic in one of our first games of the year on a buzzer beater. And, and then we, we lost to them in, in district play, another really close game. And at that point, they didn't have the play-ins or anything like that. So, um, you know, we had a, a pretty good year, but two, two uh, three really tough losses that, that always stood out. But, um, you know, that was a great year with, with great players. You know, I, um, 2008, I remember – with that team, that was one of the first years we, we qualified for the state tournament. We actually went down and played a game at South Philly High School, which I thought they should really not be having high school games in this gym because it was not nice, um, you know. But uh, that was uh, some good moments. 2009 was, was a fun season. I remember we, uh, I had uh, Chris Markle and Timmy Jones and um, at that point, Ross Hall, uh, he went on to play football at, at Nova. He was a junior. Tyler Purvis was a junior. But, you know, we had a, a, a great trip. We, we went out to Johnstown. We qualified for the state tournament. A uh, good golf buddy of mine was from Johnstown. He gave me a great Italian restaurant to go to. And I'll never forget, like, the, ke- the kids ate so much. And I'm thinking, <laughs> I don't know how we're going to be able to play here in a little bit. So, it was a nice day in March and I found a, an outdoor park and it was funny. The kids ran around for a half hour, like they were in elementary, you know, play a recess period, but we went out then and, and we played at the Johnstown team. We, we beat them, um, you know, uh, played a great game. We, we ended up then losing in overtime to Holy ghost prep in, in the semifinal game. Um, so that was great. 2010, you know, those guys were seniors and we lost to um, to Middletown in, in the uh, uh, in the district final, which is a great game. We, we ended up winning a couple uh, uh, state games. The 2011 year was was just was fantastic. You know, we open up with 22 straight wins. Um, you know, we lost to Hemfield uh, at home at the buzzer uh, in the in the in the league playoffs. But. We then rebounded and, and, and made a great run and won districts uh, and, and made it to the semifinals of the state tournament, losing to, to Newman Gretti. But, you know, like you sometimes think of the, the, the wins. I, I thought one of the best things that happened to us when we lost that game to Hempfield, you know, the next day we called practice and, and we didn't practice. We just sat in the locker room and, and we talked about situations and it, I think it, it, it was definitely helpful to, 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 you know, get the kids motivated again. Um, you know, when districts started that next, that first game, we played Gettysburg um, and we got, we got off to a slow start. It was a little scary there the first couple of minutes on the bench, but um, all of a sudden we, we, uh, we, we woke up and we went on and, and finished when we dominated that game and the next two and you know we played Middletown who had the, the two division one players and the the uh, Nicholas kid and uh, but uh, we played a that was a fantastic basketball game and that you know, was just such a great group of kids um, and, and I'm thrilled uh, you know to have you know Will Slosher was a part of that and he's now coaching with us uh, Phil Wanger um, you know I got a chance to spend some time he he was actually in town and Right uh, after we won districts this year, we got together and were able to hang out for a while. So it, it's great having connections with those kids. You know, Devon Pinkert was on that team, and and he's going now to to coach over at Country Day. I, I still stay in touch with him quite a bit. So, um, you know, those teams were were fantastic. The seventeen team, um, you know, winning the league title as well as then going on to to win uh, districts in, in another classic um, overtime game. You know, uh, I, I remember we actually won our first round district game was an overtime. And I forget exactly who it was again with bad memory, but Brian Downey was a, was a player on that team. I, and I had coached Brian was the third Downey I had in the team. And you talk about earlier when you see when you've had family members and you know what kind of blood is in families like Brian you know, came off the bench. But any minute he played, he he was a ball of energy and he was incredible on on the sidelines and um i remember when that huddle broke up in hershey you know how 
Brian just sent that reminder out to the kids. Like, this is just where we were the other day and we're going to finish it. Like we finished that game. Mm -hmm. um, you know, another great story with, with, with that game, Cole ports, um, you know, Cole was a captain on that, that 2017 team. Um, he was the class president, you know, Cole averaged, you know, two minutes a game, but you talk about an incredible leader uh, in the classroom in practices. Um, you know, he was, you know, he was just outstanding. And, and Cole was from, he went to grade school at Seven Sorrows, um, which is Middletown. So he knew all those kids growing up and Cole wrote an incredible game plan uh, in that game. Um, and it was detailed. It was three pages. And he, you know, he told you which way a kid tied his shoes. I mean, we knew everything we could about that game. And like, I, I remember sharing, we had opened up, a, you know, an overtime, a six point lead or whatever it was. And um, Chad Wanger had fouled out. But I remember, you know, putting Cole in the game to say, you gave us this chance to win this game, you know, and, and having him go out and, and take the floor like that to, to finish things out was great. And Cole stayed involved. You know, he graduated Penn State in three and a half years. And, and I'm happy to say he's, he, he's our freshman coach now doing a, a fantastic job. So, you know, having kids and moments like that, you know, come back or, or you know, it, it, it makes you want to coach, you know, but uh, the 20 season, the 21 season, you know, the 20 season was just incredible with the, you know, the, the way we won games, uh, playing McCaskey at home. Um, that crowd was was just amazing, you know, and I in, in the years I've been involved as a player, as a coach, um, that that gym's never been that packed before. Um, and it was just uh, an incredible game and it was a, a great win for us. Um, you know, in that district game with, with David making that shot in overtime, you know, beating, you know, McDevitt is, is obviously a big rival. We, we've been playing them for a long time and we'll continue to do that. So. But again, uh, you can go back and uh, it, it's great. Again, with technology, you have highlight stuff of, of so much that you can do and huddle. You can go back and watch anything, anytime. And my mom actually still puts a great scrapbook together. So it's when we were shut down for a long time, it was fun to go back and, and see all that stuff. And you know, I've been blessed to stay in, in contact with so many kids and, and do different things and golf's my thing. And there's, there's a lot of golf. I got a chance to play golf with some past players uh, not too long ago. That was a lot of fun. So any involvement that I could continue to have and you know, that, that stuff uh, that, that means the world to me. Now you were, you were, uh, you were on the bench with, with Bill Southward in the 2003. What, what were your thoughts? I mean, that team obviously was special. I saw the, the one game, I don't know where it was, but it was like, a two point game or Testa hit some shot at the end that, that kind of propelled you guys into the state state finals as an assistant watching that team how, how did they develop and and what what type of guidance did Bill give those guys to you know to hit the mountain yeah I mean those guys were were, were extremely motivated they were gym rats um you know back in that time you know, there wasn't really any AAU involved. So, you know, they, they did so much of that stuff on their own. Um, you know, they wanted to be in the gym in the morning, you know, doing lifting stuff. They wanted to be after school shooting. Um, but they were just hard workers and they, they, they got along so well together. Um, you know, that's definitely when you have, you know, kids on the floor that are, complete and and they're trustworthy in each other and and their own abilities and their teammates abilities it just makes such a a big big difference and you know as great as greg was um you know he'd be the first to tell you that he had so much help you know he had zach shaletsky and ryan purvis and mason weeks um keith keller you know andrew kaler ian giblin there's so many guys that contributed at different times and you know if if it's probably the the Harrington game that you might have been talking about. Where, yeah, where that was the yeah. one. That was yeah. the one. Yeah. yeah, that was crazy. There was fans after the game. It was it was nuts. Yes, yeah. that was the one. Yep, and he he kept his dribble alive, and he made a pass to Keith Keller under the basket to tie the game. And then in overtime, we 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 ended up dominating overtime. Then, but it was, uh, yeah, 
I mean, South South was was so great and, and gave myself. Um, Jason Yurchek was another you know lead assistant, and he's helping with Freddie now over at, at McCaskey. But you know, South gave us so many great opportunities to teach and to talk to the kids. And you know, he uh, he used to let Jason and I do a lot of offensive stuff, and and he really focused his mind on the defensive stuff. And um, you know, but he was so fun to work with and. You know, it was great to have him back. He, you know, he's retired now, but he spent a lot of time doing some uh, some sub teaching at Catholic this year. And he was there for a lot of our playoff games, you know, working as crowd control for only 100 fans that we had in the stands. But good gig. Yeah, it, it was a good yeah, gig. He, he's, <laughs> still, uh, he's, he's still, um, you know, I think of him and, and some of the things that he taught me over the years that are, are certainly, um, you know, very much involved in, in what we do. and and how we teach things so uh going back to bill i got, I got two questions for you relating to yeah. bill do, do you still do stops as far as your defense and he had something called socks and i don't know what the heck socks was but i remember he did something with socks and if you did this and you got a sock but I, I i remember talking to bill bill and i graduated um at millersville at the same time and okay. we were in the same dorm and uh he was he was a good guy <laughs> you know good guy back then still a good guy but oh yeah i just wanted to ask if you still do stops and in, 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 uh, we practice. do a lot of stop stuff um well some of the drills that we do is you know we'll, we'll do drills where you know scoring doesn't matter it's all about getting defensive stops um we do a lot of that stuff um just stressing the importance of, of defending um the socks one i'm not sure about that one i don't quite remember that one i'll have to ask him sometime what he meant with that but yeah um yeah, you no know, stops is uh, that's talked about all the time. So I, I always thought, coach, and maybe you can correct me here because you you've seen a lot. But I've always thought, as a coach or as a program, the head coach is either an offensive dude or a defensive uh -huh. dude. And when he's telling me about all these defensive drills, you know, he's doing, I'm just, I'm just shaking my head. I said, well, how do you score points? You know, and he's like, well, you score points on the defense. I said, no, 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 you, you got to try to score points on the offensive end. So yeah. I don't know, what, what do you think about that statement? I, I always felt like either the head coach is kind of leaning towards the offensive end or he's leaning towards the defensive end. And yeah, no, I, I, I agree with that. Um, I, I, I mean, I'm, it's funny, and I say this, you know, if you ever knew me as a player, um, I, I never played defense in my life. But, you know, it was really something that when, when Coach Walk got me involved and gave me the opportunity to coach and then South as well, like how important that stuff really is. And, and, and again, I, people ask why I got into coaching. I, I, it's because I, I just wish I would have done a lot more when I – was a player mm -hmm. and I want to try to teach the things that I didn't do. Um, so for me, defense is probably my mindset. Um, I, I, you know, I would maybe be 60, 40. Um, yeah, I, I liked the offensive stuff in the motion, but the way we do things, like I, I, I really do, I have a great staff um, and I really put a lot of stuff in their hands, you know, Jimmy Heisey and Will Slosher, they're the, they're our offensive guys and and Jimmy is uh, he, he's really good with with sets and doing just teaching different ways to get some stuff out of our motion stuff you know will takes care of all of our inbounds and and some of that stuff you know on the defensive side you know Brian McCaskey and Matt Fulmer uh, they really focus a lot of their stuff on that and you know I, I think it's important for the kids to hear different voices like I don't want to be the only one that's talking in practice and you know, we'll go through and I may, may tell Jimmy that to, to take this part of practice and Brian to take that part. And, you know, I, I think it's important and kids sometimes can can understand their voice and how they're teaching it maybe a little different than I do. So it's, you know, I, I let our all of our coaches talk uh, pregame because um, I think, again, everyone's going to talk uh, a different way and have something that could be effective in the game, um, you know, so. Yeah, believe me, I, 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 I've been there a long time, but if I didn't have great staff around me, it, it, it'd be really hard to do. And uh, I know we wouldn't be, be as, um, you know, as, um, as effective as we've been um, and, and have, you know, if, if we didn't have uh, a great staff. So what, we'll, we'll end on this coach, if you could change one thing about the game, high school, what would you change right now? Um, 
Yeah, it's if tough. Anything. Yeah, <laughs> anything. You know, I, I've heard coaches say, you know, some want a shot clock. I, I, I don't think that's necessary. Um, you know, again, we don't have any money to pay for it. So, um, you know, it, it, it would be so hard to bring into our league. Um, you know, some of these fast paced teams want to do that stuff. But for us, like, again, we, we teach control and sometimes, you know, our, our, our best defense can be our offense if, if we're, you know, if we can move the basketball. So a shot clock w- wouldn't play into our hands. Um, you know, it, it's tough to say exactly what I'd want to take out. Um, I just there's some things that I don't necessarily agree with. You know, and, and well, let's and, hit on one of them. Just one, just one. What what don't you agree with? Um, or two. Yeah, I'm just trying to think of some of them in particular. But you know, as far as you know, like, I, I'm not an NBA guy at all, and in just the way you know, it, it's for us being able to play multiple defenses and doing different things. I think is effective. Um, I think at times when, um, you know, teams really do like the drive and kick type of stuff. I'm, I'm just, I think at times we, we shoot way too many three point shots, you know, and, and a teaching point for me, a lot of times is I tell kids, you know, an average high school player shoots less than 30% from the floor. So there's times I do want the three point line taken out. Um, I'd love to have it taken out in practice because, you know, sometimes kids just going to warm themselves up, go right to the three point line. And um, it's, you know, it's a necessity. And you have some kids that 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 can shoot it, but a high majority of kids can't do it. So it's, you know, let, let's learn to simplify the games and find different ways that we can we, we can score the basketball other than just catch and shoot type. You know, be a player. Don't just be a shooter. Nice. And we're, we're trying like. Devin was a great example last year. He was probably one of our best shooters, um, but he was able to score in different ways. And it's something that we talked with Ross, and I thought Ross did a much better job where Ross early was just a shooter, and we we talked to him about being a scorer. Um, so <laughs> believe it or not, I, I think taking a three-point line out at times would probably be one of the things I would tell you that I, I – I, I would be okay with. Okay. okay. That's good. That's good. Hey coach, I thank you so much. Um, I appreciate, I know when I get to talk to you after a game, you're always straight up with us. There's no, there's no smoke and I always have time with you and your kids. And I, I appreciate you. I appreciate rich. When we go in there, you talk about the McCaskey game. You know, I, I, I had front row seats for that. And that was, that was a pretty special night just to see, you know, the, the, the city and the Catholic school play each other. And, you know, I, I don't know, I don't know how you feel, but I, I'd like to see you guys do that. But I, I know scheduling is an issue probably more for them than it is for you. What's your thoughts? Yeah. On that? yeah no, Freddie and I, you know, we, we've talked about it and, and no, it's, it's probably not realistic to happen just because, you know, again, they want to make the playoffs, you know, it, it's, it's an advantage for us to do it, but it's a disadvantage for them. And, and I, and I understand that. And, um, it would be fun to do, um, but it, it's just going to be really difficult to. But, you know, I, I remember as as a player and being there, we were still actually in, in section one. My, my mm-hmm. first year was 88, 89. And, you know, we still played them in, in a league basis. And you know, th- those times were, were certainly were fun. Um, but um, to be able to do it now, it, it's it, it's unrealistic. But I, I, I would love to do it if, if it was possible. Let me, let me, as, as you're talking, it always hits me in the head. So 88, 89, was Tom Sterner your coach? No, um, Tom Sterner had left the two years prior, I believe. Okay. There was a guy that came in from Mount Carmel area um, and he actually coached one year um, along with, with coach Arcudi. Um, and then my freshman year, uh, Mike Garman started. Okay. Okay. And Mike was there for three years. Um, and then my senior year was when coach walk came in. Okay. Hopefully, uh, hopefully if LL hoops does, does some sort of history thing, we'll, we'll have, we'll have everybody's records and who was coaching when and all that stuff. So, Hey, yep. I appreciate your time. I appreciate your candorness. Um, and we'll see you soon. All right. 
Dale, I appreciate you guys and LL Hoops and all that you do for, for us coaches. So keep up the great work. Thank you, brother. Hey, we'll all be right. in touch. All right. Bye-bye. See Bye. ya.